It's this week's Welcome to Mystara, and we are headed north, because this time around you selected the Canada of Mystara, the region known as Norwald. Not Norworld, as many people pronounce it. For a lot of people, Norwald is what sets Mystara apart from the other lesser settings, because this is the setting that started you off as nobility, a title that you earn and you didn't have handed to you just by playing Birthright. Now we dig into the mysterious land that lies to the north of the northern reaches, run by one of the only non-magic-using kings in all of Alphacia. So put on your toque, heat up the back bacon, and brush up on your hockey lore, because I'm Mr. Welch, and we're taking you to Norwald. Norwald, of course, was made famous by the first companion level module test of the Warlords. For a review of that module, check out the previous video that I did about a year ago. Norwald is an Alphacian province, the only province located on the continent of Brune, just above the Heldonic Freeholds. The geography of the region includes a large amount of mountains, because what's Mystara without mountains, after all? As well as hills, numerous swamps, and what's not covered in mountains or hills is either heavily forested or complete tundra. So in short, Canada. Compared to other nations, Norwald is not heavily settled, especially considering its size is massive. It's easily the largest populated region on the continent. That's what the plot of Test of the Warlords was, is the new king realizes he doesn't have the population to keep the region self-sustaining. The region, from 1000 AC on, is in the middle of a large colonization period, because unless he can pay if it's worth in taxes, then it's not considered a valuable province and can be shut down at any time by the Empress. The three primary settlements in Norwald, when the players finally get there, is the capital of Alpha, the free city of Oceansend, and the pirate town of Landfall. Alpha is the largest, with almost 100,000 citizens living either in the city or in the surrounding farms. This makes up well more than half the total population of the Alphacians in Norwald. Alpha is a major port, with most of the goods going to Alphacia going through Alpha on their way to the other ports. As such, most of the city's industry is devoted to processing goods and shipping them out. Oceansend is the oldest city in Norwald, existing before the coming of the Alphacians, comprising 40,000 individuals, split evenly between city folk and farmers. It's heavily fortified and allied with nearby dwarven camps for additional troops. Its industry is primarily mining, and its fishing fleet is known for their efficiency and skill. The citizens of Oceansend are fiercely loyal to their king and will unite to protect him from any threat. The last city is the town of Landfall, which isn't much more than a bunch of ragtag wooden shacks. Only 10,000 people live there, most of them inside the city. There is no law except survival in the fittest in Landfall. Pirates and thieves run the actual government, with the official Alphacian lord working as a puppet for them. As long as the king thinks Landfall is paying its taxes, it's ignored. If proof was given that they were cheating on their taxes to the king, then changes would be made, and not nice changes either. There are several supernatural locations inside of Norwald, as well as small pockets of demi-human settlements not allied with Alphacia as well. The most famous is the Arch of Fire, which consists of two volcanoes 75 miles apart, with a spout of lava flowing from the northern volcano into the southern volcano constantly. The volcano serves as a conduit to the plane of fire, and such the areas are surrounding the volcanoes are filled with elementals and other creatures native to that plane. To the north, there is a giant whirlpool that threatens any ships that get near, but fortunately there are no settlements near the whirlpool, causing it to be more of a curiosity than a navigational hazard. There are small but significant populations of hen and elves found in Norworld. The town of Lehi is the largest and most well-known of the hen villages, with the other six in close proximity. The hen control passage up and down the nearby river, as well as provide well-run and comfortable inns along the river for merchants and explorers to use. The elves are scattered across dozens of small settlements all across Norworld, but rarely in large enough numbers to be noticed. The elves are largely isolationists. While not hostile, they don't interact with the new settlers very often. They're happy to hunt and farm on their own in the vast expanses of Norwald. The two most dangerous groups of creatures in Norwald, without doubt, are the frost giants of the Frosthaven Island and the hundreds of dragons found in the Worm's Tooth Range. The dragons litter the mountain, with every cave of sufficient size filled with some sort of dragon. The largest dragon is an ancient red, who keeps the rest of his kin under control, knowing that a full-blown attack by dragons would draw heavy reprisal from Alphacia. Because of this, dragon attacks are infrequent, and the dragon hordes are somewhat smaller than what other dragons possess. The largest threat is that of the frost giants, because of their sheer numbers, and in the heavy winters, the waters surrounding the island ice over, causing the giants to attack the mainland during the winter. Only retreating before the spring thaws destroy the ice bridge. There's thousands of giants living on Frosthaven, making any reprisal against them quite difficult. Erichal of Alphacia rules Norwald with mixed results. He is the son of Empress Ariadna, though he was born without magic. 
Normally only magic users can rule in Alphasia, but being the Empress's son has its benefits, so she gave him control of the most distant province in Alphasia. He brought his half-brother Lernal with him and gave him control of Landfall. Both the king and his brother have proved ineffectual rulers, Lernal being a complete disgrace while Ericol is just too naive and hands off to be a good king. Ericol needs more settlers in Norwald, so he's quite generous to the new lords and ladies that arrive, but doesn't bother to sort between the good leaders and the bad ones. Norwalt is a political flashpoint between the two empires, though it's one that's not likely to erupt like the Isle of Dawn. Both Alphacia and Thyatis have tried colonizing Norwald. The first attempt by Thyatis was destroyed by Alphacian-sponsored mercenaries, and the second attempt, Oceansen, declared itself independent after the last war. Alphacia has a problem maintaining the location because of its distance to Alphacia itself, though it does expect the region to pay its taxes on a timely basis. The undeveloped and remoteness of Norwald does keep it safe from attack because even if another power took Norwald over somehow, they would still be sitting on a massive land of virgin forests and unmined minerals requiring a large investiture to make the conquest actually profitable. Norwald is one of the showcases of Mistara because it represents everything that makes the setting memorable. The land is unsettled and unexplored, deliberately left for the players to stake out their own claim before becoming major power players in the region itself. This isn't something you experience in other settings, at least not in a well laid out region. Everything is settled in Forgotten Realms or Greyhawk. There's little conquest involved if the players don't want to take that route. The land is just unsettled. The leadership in Norwald is largely incompetent. If the players prove themselves better, there's a very good chance they will be asked by Thyatis to lead a revolt, or even take Norwald for themselves. The only other setting that is comparable to Norwald in Mastara is the Isle of Dread, though the players aren't invited to the Isle of Dread like they are in Norwald. The setting is its own campaign practically, and while it's remote, it's, it is hospitable. The region is narrow, but it reaches far to the north, though if the players go too far north, it's nothing but tundra. Still, it's all unexplored, and it's perfect for players wanting to forge their own campaign. That's Norwald, the Mastar in Canada. It's a large blank slate left entirely up to the party to shape and forge into their own version. Now if they fall to the marauding frost giants or manage to recreate the maple syrup empire is left entirely to them, but the decision is theirs alone. Replacing this topic, I'm going back to the 5th edition classes in Mastara. So it's going to be Barbarians in Mastara, that class that should have been a background, but instead it's just an angry fighter with no clothes. But we've got to have clothes because chainmail bikinis are bad or something. So until next week, blame Canada.